How are you feeling now? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Still finding it difficult? Yeah. That's fine. The hospital is just one minute away, so we'll just yeah. we'll just go, okay? Okay. Okay. Chair, so that's a good sign. It's reassuring for Nurse Thelma and Nurse Cathy to see a patient arrive in a chair and not on a stretcher. But they'll only know if there's any lasting damage from the chemical fumes once they run a series of tests. Fishing is big business in Shetland and it's also a recreational pastime. A variety of fishing injuries come through the doors of A&E. Recently retired Grace and her husband were fishing near their home in Borough, and Grace seems to have got more than she bargained for. Well, we were catching that morning fish. It was not like to come ashore, but... <laughs> <laughs> a good catch today, then? Yeah. Plenty of work. Oh well, yeah. the fish were too good to come in. Oh no, we, we did win in and <laughs> went home and got on a clean pair of trousers. <laughs> Just sit tight for a moment, we'll get the doctor to come here look. Casting her eye over the injury is Shetland native Dr Jennifer Briggs. Well, I'm just going to put in a pretty bit of local anaesthetic around where it's come yeah, out yeah. and then we'll just Pick continue, back the way. continue going the way that he's... Because your barb on the end of the tip, if I try to put him back, it's going to drag. I mean, would it take him this way then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I tried to take him up myself with ice, but it didn't work. Oh, good, good try. <laughs> good try. <laughs> kind of quite sting. Yeah, well, it's only a sting. I was in here ten weeks ago with a broken elbow. Okay. Same <laughs> <So> room. You're <laughs> a frequent flyer. <laughs> I'm just going to nip this up here. Yeah. If it's very uncomfortable, let me kin. Yeah. Ooh! Where did he go? Your pardon. Are you okay? Can you feel him? No, 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 it's fine. I'll tell you something that's well and truly stuck. I think the, the barb is just under the skin and yeah. it's just really catching and I kind of get him curled out. Could be a new fashion trend. One of these new fashionable piercings. <laughs> no, I think I'll not be there. No, no. The infection sets in it won't <laughs> be very attractive. Using medical pliers, the hook is delicately removed. There we go. Yay! Well done. There we go. Good for you. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Give him a bit of a clean up. Would you want to keep this hook as a souvenir? No, thank no, you. I'll put something in the door for you. <laughs> so patient Grace is off the hook. You're happy? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> At the Gilbert Bain Hospital, patients are given as much care as possible, but sometimes they need to move on to more specialised care on the mainland. Every year, there are up to 500 organised patient transfers from the Gilbert Bain to the mainland, and it's not just getting to hospital that's unusual on Shetland. Transferring to another is just as much of a challenge. Patients are often transferred to Aberdeen or Glasgow for specialist treatment, and when the call comes to send the patient off Shetland, it's the responsibility of the medical team to prepare the patient for transport on an aeroplane. I'll go and grab the stuff that I need. OK. Nurse Emma Williamson will often work on call as a patient transfer nurse when she's not working in A&E. Have you got any flushes? Um, what have we got here? A few bits and bobs. We'll just draw a couple up, Amanda. Today, there's a gentleman needing to get to the coronary care unit in Aberdeen as quickly as possible. So, Emma's been called in. I've been called in. I was actually in the middle of a circuit class, so that's why I look so sweaty and minging. Um, and it's an urgent transfer, because this gentleman's had an infraposterior MI. I need to get him to CCU. Alec was brought in this morning with a heart problem from Sunbra in the south of the island. He's been under the care of nurse Amanda Brown, and has received treatment to decrease the risk of a heart attack. Yeah, it's it come in this morning and had a ECG um, and some blood done, and it showed ST elevation. So he's had a posterior MI, so they had to get the doctor immediately and consultant informed, and they got him thrombolyzed. 
me to next place to the clock roster. With the procedures he'll need, it's the best course of action for Alec to be sent to the specialists in Aberdeen. Fingers crossed, nice day for flying, so hopefully we'll just get him there. ASAP, safe and sound. <laughs> The patient transfer works on a voluntary basis, with nurses opting to take part in their spare time. You don't have to do this if you work here. It's kind of um, your, your choice. Aha, isoprenaline. Thought it was in the fridge. The Gilbert Bain is well equipped for general care, but serving a population of just 23,000 people, the hospital can't cater for every level of specialist care. 165 miles from the mainland, and 230 from Aberdeen Airport, Alex will be flown direct to Aberdeen Royal Infirmary. They're going to be at Sunbra, which is a 30-minute drive, a 40-minute drive with ambulance fever hospital down to Sunbra, and then it'll be about 45 minutes on the plane. The sooner we get him to Aberdeen and he gets the um, in investigation um, and the procedures, then the better for his like heart. So we'll just get the ambulance sorted and we'll be off ski. So a few things to prepare before Alex can get on his way to Aberdeen. <laughs> Another special part of Shetland and the reason that so many people love to visit here is its rich diversity of wildlife. And just like the tourists they attract, sometimes these animals get into trouble and need rescuing. Since 1987, it's been down to the Hillswick Wildlife Sanctuary to care for those animals that need it. Husband and wife team, Pete and Jan Bevington, have been running the charity, where they patch up the island's injured otters and care for orphaned seals. Have you seen an otter? Today, they've been called out to Vidlin, 22 miles north of Lerwick. There's a pilot whale that's been spotted in one of the inlets. The behaviour's rather strange, you know, to be coming up and popping up like this every 15, 20 seconds or so. Rather than swimming normally, it's spy hopping, going up and down, which can be a cause for concern. It's come so far inland that we're worried now that it's going to strand, you know. If we could just get it out to sea, it should be fine. But there's some bad news. The boat they were relying on has broken down. So now we're just desperately trying to find someone because that's far too close in. Looks like he's, he might strand if we don't try to nudge him out. But on Shetland, it's never too long before someone reaches out with a helping hand. They're going to come around and see if they can uh, lead the whale out. Come on, boys. Come on, the boys, they can do it. Despite the best intention of the boat owners, the whale can't be persuaded to move away. Please go, please go. Being close to the shore affects the whale's echolocation causing it to become confused. With the pilot whale, they don't arrive in slowly. It'll, it'll hit, come so far in, and then they panic, and they just hit the beach like torpedoes. When everything looks hopeless, there's more help on the horizon. I hope they are coming to us. I think they must be. Two kayakers have come to help. The main thing we want is to make some kind of blockade to stop him circling ever and ever closer. It seems to be doing the job. You can splash the paddles a bit, maybe. That's it, that's perfect. Oh no, he's gone by. Careful. Yeah, but you'll get frightened. Come away. I think you ought to come back. Come back. It's a delicate operation. The kayakers don't want to accidentally scare him closer to the shore. Still dangerous, Pete, because um, he could use that tail. He could panic and use that tail. Are you fine? They've helped move him away, but with night falling, Jan and Pete have a nervous wait to see if he'll swim out to sea.
hardy folk they might be, but often the severity of an injury or accident means no amount of Shetland grit can prevent someone from coming into A&E. Hello, Mr. Johnson. Hello. How are you doing? Can you just sit better, and sit? Yeah. better if you... <laughs> Fisherman Brian has been evacuated from a trawler after inhaling chemical fumes on board. Brian has mixed two chemicals which have given off noxious fumes. Though he was exposed only for a short time, the team still need to assess if there's any long-term damage to his airways. How is that right now? How is your breath? Is it much the same or is it a little bit better than it was? Slightly better. Slightly better. Slightly better. Oh, okay. And still, do you feel any pain or anything yeah. here in that spot mask? Nurse Cathy needs to check his breathing and circulation before running a number of tests. Have you ever used yeah, one of these okay. before? As hard and as fast as you can. Junior doctor Saul Wilson has arrived to help with Brian's assessment. Yeah, when you took a different thing, just do your best. That's fine. <coughs> <So> 2.20. <coughs> Having requested a number of tests, including an ECG and a chest X-ray, the consultant hands over to Dr. Wilson. The team's first priority, though, is to work out just how toxic the chemicals are. So he was working with Bilges, which I guess is like a, I guess that's like a brand name, and then he's mixed it with Chloris oh, okay. by accident. Okay, I'll go and do that. Cool. One chemical is a grease and scum removing product and chloris is granulated chlorine used to control bacteria and algae. What no one knows is how they react together. So a call to the experts is needed. I'll phone uh, the Poisons Information Service and see what we should be doing. OK. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. See you later. Hi, I'm Dr Wilson, one of the junior doctors here. So do you mind if I take blood first from your wrist? Um, so just swap hands and I'll take it off for a bit. The blood tests are vital to show if there are any unusual chemicals present in his blood. He's about to get an X-ray shortly, yeah. He's had a blood, he's getting a blood cast done. It's in the machine as we speak, yeah. I've done a peak flow, yeah. It was 3.20, so a little bit low, but. Um, the consultant's aware of that. Poisons are saying chest X-ray, EBG, peak flow, ECG, and monitor him for four hours. We have to watch out for increasing wheeze if he starts yeah. drooling, any difficulties swallowing. If there's swallowing difficulties, he'll need an endoscopy. Okay. So they're saying maybe be a bit more cautious than what they're saying because it's a bit unknown. This was really the sort of chlorine type inhalation yeah, exactly. they were going with, so ECG. just the ECG. Yeah, yeah, cool. Unsure of the exact effects of these chemicals together, the Poisons Information Service advises close monitoring of the patient. Not out of danger yet, Brian still has an anxious wait to see if the test results will show any permanent damage. In Rhesus, patient Alec has a problem with his heart and is preparing to be transferred to the Aberdeen Coronary Care Unit. The Air Ambulance Patient Transfer Service is responsible for transporting patients off the island. The service is supported by nurses working at the Gilbert Bain. It's their job to chaperone patients to hospitals on the mainland. But, as always, travelling on and off Shetland brings with it weather concerns for Nurse Emma, who'll be travelling with Alec. I think the worst weather was uh, over 100 mile an hour gales, flying through Sumbra, and we were like, will we go, will we go, will we go, and then eventually there was a break in the wind and we went, but it was pretty, it wasn't for the faint hearted, that was for sure. It looks, it's looking very nice coming up this morning anyway, although it was noticed. It's actually the sun, the, the sun is just threatening is to come through, okay. yeah, no. hint of blue sky. Good. So, I was going to plant beetroot today, so it just got me out of that. Emma, are you going to connect him to your own monitoring, or do you want... No, lick your stuff. So if we... Do you if, want us to take it in and connect it Yeah, so we're just on the trolley, all connected up and ready to go. That'll cool. be good. 
To get Alec on the ambulance stretcher, the team need to transfer his ECG monitoring. We're putting him under a bit more stress just because we're going to Aberdeen, so we'd just like to keep a really close eye on this patient. So the nursing and ambulance staff just need to get Alec transferred and ready for his journey to Sunbury Airport. How's that feel, Alec, there? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. We'll just phone his wife once you leave. So she kind, yeah. So, inferior um, info posterior MI, been thrombolised, had all the goodies, and have been accepted to CCU for probably angios, hopefully today. Hopefully, hopefully. Before we go, is you feeling OK, Alec? Yeah, yeah. All the best. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. I'll phone you, ladies. That's how you get on. Best, Alex. Thanks. I'll give you a... Yeah. Did you shout to them? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, I've got my kit. I actually quite like once you're on the air ambulance, because mm. it's, especially if it's a fine, yeah, yeah, it's, kind, it's yeah. quite smooth. Mm -hmm. A lot of the burns that we get in that need to fly out, they can, some of them are a complete handful mm -hmm. in any, mm -hmm. and then you get them on the air ambulance and it must yeah. just the hum and the, mm -hmm. and they have a pity bit of a, down, yeah. and then they just usually fast yeah. sleep. Yeah, yeah. But it could be fine to get you to Aberdeen. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you might be, well, depending on how fast when we go in, mm -hmm. they might be waiting to attack yeah. you, so... Yeah, yeah. yeah, sometimes I think it might even be faster as if you're in right in outskirts of Aberdeen. Yeah, yeah. Sumbera Airport is located in the south of mainland Shetland. With the drive to the airport taking 30 minutes, there's plenty of time for Emma to keep reassuring Alec and put him at his ease. If you get your angios and yeah. if the blockage is stentable, um, basically what it is is kind of inside of a biro where the ink sits, yeah, yeah. that's the kind of size that you're looking at and it's like a tiny bit of chicken wire, mm -hmm. that's what it looks like, yeah, but still yeah. that they're using. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they just go in through the air now mm -hmm. and they'll just open that up and that just mm -hmm. sort of squish the blockage in. Safely on the tarmac at Sumber Airport, Emma and the crew can get Alex on the plane. Fine, how are you? Seen you for I know. ages. I've been cruising around the aisles in the summer, sorry. Yeah, really fine. Um, blood pressure's still a bit low, but his heart rate's good. He looks well, his colour is good. So, um, yeah, pleased up until now, so... With the sun shining, there's no sign of those famous Shetland winds. You can imagine what it's like in a 100 mile an hour winds pouring the rain. Again, today is like luxury. <laughs> With Alec loaded and his wife Marjorie ready to board, the first part of the patient transfer is complete. The 230-mile flight to Aberdeen will normally take around 45 minutes. With engines warmed up and a short taxi for the air ambulance, Emma, Alex and the crew can get on their way. Commercial fisherman Brian was airlifted to the Gilbert Bain Hospital after inhaling poisonous fumes. Although stable in recess, there's still concern that the chemicals may have caused long-term damage. Brian's ECG results are back. Dr Wilson checks them over. It looks fine to me. He's not complaining of chest pains. So we're not worried about any sort of acute cardiac um, event. Sometimes chemical abnormalities can cause um, some abnormalities uh, on the ECG reading, but there's no, no signs of that at the moment, but we'll probably have to repeat that to see if there's any changes later on. With the ECG looking clear, Brian is now having the last of his tests. chest x-ray will show if the chemical inhalation has caused fluid to leak onto his lungs. OK, if you breathe in now, hold your breath and breathe away normally again. 